All right. I am Bree Noble, and I am here today with Art Munson from Music Library Report. I'm really excited that we're able to get together for this little interview. Um, I have been, you know, watching what you guys do over there for a while, and I love it. Um, so I would love to have you first let people know a little bit about yourself, how you got into the music business, and what gave you the idea for the Music Library Report. Oh, uh, that's a long story. Uh, okay, I'm ready. <clears throat> well, oh, got stationed out here in 1960 something and uh, started working with uh, the originator, pretty much the originator of surf music, Dick Dale. Went from there to the Righteous Brothers. This is probably a lot of a lot of your audience is way like way too far back for them. No, no, no. Uh, I, I attract everyone that from their twenties to their sixties and Yeah, well it's the same with MLR. <laughs> the same. Uh, so uh it, you know, I went to the Righteous Brothers, uh they were a big act at the time and then beat around in a couple little bands, original bands, and then uh, at the time I was in Orange County in Southern California and I realized that is you know i could be 40 or 50 years old and be playing in a club and some 20 year old bar manager would tell me to turn my amp down and didn't want to do that so <laughs> so moved to la and i knew a few people uh, in the business from working with dick dale and with the righteous brothers and moved up there when i was 30 and decided that you know i was going to try and go to the studio route and play uh, you know do studio work which i did for a number of years I was also a writer at A&M <clears throat> for a number of years. I, uh, one of the jobs I had was working with Paul Williams, who was a great songwriter. And worked with him for a number of years. And um, oh, out of that, I graduated into having my own studio in L.A. Got tired of playing for a living. Hmm. And uh, let's see, moved to Nashville for a while to do that. Uh, somewhere in there, we started an Internet business, and that turned out really well. Um, Ran that business for a while, but always always wrote music. Had a studio in Nashville, outside of Nashville. Though I have to say that I built this beautiful studio, and um, I thought I would continue on engineering. And I had a band come in and you know shake the studio down and say, "Well, we want to book some time." And at that time, I knew I didn't want to do that anymore. Mm. So <clears throat> got back to LA and had a friend that was working with a production company, excuse me, <clears throat> um, working with a, uh, a production company in Philadelphia and they were looking for music and we started writing production music. That was about 2006. Um, when I say we, my wife, Robin and I. And uh, the great thing about being married with a spouse who does music, it's a wonderful way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then, um, uh, 2009, literally in a yoga class, I found MLR uh, because I, I realized that we were doing production music, but we um, there was no central source for directories of like all these different music libraries that were out there. And fortunately, I contacted a few people who gave me some a couple of lists, and that's how I started. And I built the website. I knew enough about. Uh, and, you know, to build a website, that that's what I did. And so the rest is, you know, here we are today, 2018, and MLR has been around for almost 10 years. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Well, why don't you describe a little bit about what MLR does and what it offers for artists? Well, it's it was really designed for production music composers, because um, that's what we were doing at the time. And so it really is dedicated to those composers who are looking to get into that field. And, you know, production music is, you know, what you hear behind a lot of TV shows. It very seldom gets any kind of credit. And now, of course, it's, it's gone into, you know, YouTube videos, corporate videos, uh, commercials, jingles, um, anything where it's just that sort of background is really not featured. But uh, there was a, a stat out at one point where 80 or 90 percent of the music you hear on TV is production music. It's all in the background. Don't hold me to that percentage, but that was a number that was going around for a while. Um, so, I, you know, the thing was for me to collect all these various music libraries and uh, they could be 
to the high-end libraries, whether it was an Extreme Music or Five Alarm or any of those company, down to royalty-free sites like Audio Jungle. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going from five bucks for a queue, six bucks for a queue to <clears throat> they will buy it. Uh, excuse me, really uh, congested here. <clears throat> they will, uh, um, you know, an extreme music, you know, they're going to get top dollar for their music. Um, so it's, you know, sort of a, a directory, not sort of, it is a directory of those many, you know, at this point over 500 libraries, and I'm sure there's more, and there's some dying every day, so that we have a graveyard, <laughs> probably, and there's probably about a hundred of them in the graveyard at this point since uh, MLR opened. Um, so that's, you know, that's what we're going after. It, you know, we do get people who are, you know, interested in getting into um, placing music in films, uh, but that really isn't the thrust of MLR. It's, it's more about production music and trailer music is another one and game music, any of that kind of music is more instrumental than vocal. That's what I was going to ask. So generally is most of the people that subscribe are more instrumental um, producers or do they tend to do both and then they kind of like pull their instrumentals out of maybe songs that they've made with vocals? Well, some people do that, but it's really not that. It's more about writing for that market. Okay. So specifically you know, writing, writing for that market. Yeah, writing for that market. And there's certain guidelines that, you know, that you need to follow if you're going to, you know, like you don't do fade endings as an example. Right. You, know, you always have a button or a stinger at the end. Um, you know, you try to write so you don't have long intros. You know, you get right to it because, you know, a music supervisor isn't going to have time to listen to a long intro. They know what they want to know, you know, the meat of it. Uh, but there are libraries out there. I'll give you Crucial Music is a good example uh, that they, you know, though I have an, uh, quite a few, well, not quite a few, but a number of instrumentals there. Uh, their thrust is more, I think, vocal. Um, but, you know, it, this stuff is, it just kind of get the, gets to be kind of a mix going because you now have production music with what we call vocalese in it, which is, you know, somebody shouting, hey, or singing a little line. Uh, is that a vocal song? No, but it's got vocals in it. Mm, got it. So let me just clarify a couple of terms, because I mm. think when people are not familiar with this world, they mm. are a little confused about like, what does the term library mean? And how does that differ from like a publisher or a label? Oh, well, good question. Um, a library is, is a company that is, is looking for composers um, and, and it could be yeah they're basically looking for composers that they can place music in tv shows and or films uh, when you get into um <clears throat> and generally what they'll do depending on the company they will take um they will take 50 percent of the income and a lot of these deals are either non-exclusive or exclusive deals where you'll get the writer's share of the royalty, they will get uh, the publishing share of the royalty. That doesn't mean that they are the publisher, it's just that they get the share of that, the income, the publishing share. Um, now, if you have a non-exclusive deal, then you can go out and make that deal with a number of companies that are non-exclusive companies. If it's an exclusive deal, it could be that they end up owning the copyright, you still get your writer's share. They become the publisher because now they own the copyright and they will take whatever other, whatever income is generated from that publishing side of it. Uh, they will also, depending on the deal, they might take all of the sync fee, which would be the licensing fee for the use of that particular piece of music. Um, they also might, if they're doing that, then they will, might pay you for that copyright. In other words, they might give you 500 or a thousand dollars for that copyright mm -hmm. uh, in lieu of future license fees. Some libraries will, um, they will split the license fee, license, license fee with you, but they won't pay you any upfront money. Mm. So it just, 
you know, there's all kinds of deals out there and there are deals, none of them are set in stone. Um, you know, a library will say, this is my deal or a publisher for that matter will say, this is my deal. If you're in a position of strength, you can probably cut a better deal. Mm. It really depends on what kind of strength you have. I mean, I was in the seventies, I was signed with A&M and then they were, their publishing company was Rondor and what was the other one? I can't remember. But, you know, they were a true publishing company. They paid me as a writer to write songs. And they owned all the music. And uh, they're still trying to collect the money that they paid me over those years. <laughs> I still get statements. <laughs> they, they're still in the hole on me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but wow. I still get statements from them telling me uh, how much I still owe them. But I don't really own because it's an advance against royalties. That's, <clears throat> wow, that's awesome. Um, so... I guess my question about like the listings that you have, are they mm. monthly listings that like, are they looking for a specific thing or are you just listing what libraries are available, you know, and contact information, then we can contact them. Or are they looking for something specific in there? <clears throat> no, seldom. Um, it, it's a listing and it's kind of the hook of the su su subscriber part of the site is that, a good many of those libraries have comments and experiences of composers over the years with a particular library. So you can kind of get a feel, um, you know, what that library is like to work with. Now, a library may send out briefs, what they call them as a brief, and we're looking for this, and we're looking, you know, for this kind of music for this show. Some libraries do do that. Uh, some don't. You just give them, you know, whatever, whatever you have, and then they will put it in their catalog and then they will try to place it. Okay. So some, do those briefs come to your report or is it only once you're in that library that you then get the those? briefs will come to the library that you sign with. Okay. So okay. say you go into the site, you go to the subscription site. Now let me say this. <clears throat> I'm sorry about my congestion here. I'm living at the beach, I guess. Um, the, um, <clears throat> the, I lost my train of thought here. We're talking about the the, the briefs. Yes. Um, I just think where I was here. <laughs> Duh, old age. Um, the briefs come once you make the deal with a library. They will they will send briefs. Not all libraries will send out a brief to you. Um, the libraries we have, we we list them all. We try to keep you know current. Um, you know, some libraries will come along and say we're no longer ex accepting submissions, so we update the, I say we, it's basically me. Uh, I, I have to update the site uh, or update that particular listing if there's any changes, if they, you know, died and gone to the graveyard or get rid of them. Uh, uh, so, you know, I'm just trying to maintain a, a directory that's active and that is up to date as possible. So it's really up to the person Oh, I know what I want to say. Half of the site is free. I just want to make that clear. There's a lot of great information on the site that you don't have to pay anything for. Now, and what I do charge for, and, I, and the only reason I'm charging, I think it's a fairly nominal fee, is it, you know, it does take a certain amount of time and money to keep the thing going. So that's why I elected to have on the directory listing site, uh, you know, have that as a subscription site. But there is a lot of information uh, that's free. There's a lot of active composers that will give you feedback. Uh, we have a critique section where people will post, you know, please critique my music. What do you think of it? What could I do better? And, you know, uh, people will get on there and they'll give you a critique. And most of them are all, you know, composers are all making some kind of a living at this. I don't say they can give up their day job, but they are making money at it. Mm, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, so the libraries that you have, like if I was to look on there and I saw a bunch of libraries, are they the kind where I could just start uploading my music? Like for example, Audio Sparks or one of those where you can just put your music in their library and then if they like it, they'll use it. Or are some of them like we only accept certain music and we have to review it first? Um, I would say generally they're always going to review it. Okay. I wouldn't want to be with a site that doesn't review it. Right. You know, because then you're going to end up with God knows what. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's like give me a bunch of loops, I'll stick them together and throw them up and see what happens. <clears throat> but um, 
I would say if you want to get into, you know, a, a decent library, you would want them to review it. And, and some libraries specialize, but I think that most libraries want to have a diverse catalog because they want to, let's face it, they have clients, they want to appeal to as many people as possible. And as a composer, thankfully with Robin, she comes from a different background. So we can write a wide variety of music. So for our personal catalog, we want all kinds of styles in there. And I think a library would also. Mm, definitely. I agree. Um, so are there any other, I noticed your site has a section on newbie questions, which I think is great. Do you mm -hmm. have any, are there any other newbie questions that are common that I didn't ask already? Oh, there probably is. I can't think of them offhand. You know, we have a, a YouTube channel where I just started having somebody do a bunch of videos. So we've got about 17, 16 videos up there now with a lot of basic stuff. Cool. You know, it's um, if you search Music Library Report YouTube, you'll find it. Perfect. But uh, there's a lot of kind of just general basic information there. It's free. You know, you can just go look at it and, you know, look at that and go to the site, ask questions. People will answer them. Great. And what kind of, like, do you have any track, tracking or track record of like the success that people have found through the using the music library report as far as like money making? I really should do that. I really, need, <laughs> I really need a testimonial page. I get a lot of good feedback from people that, you know, have gotten placements and, you know, I see that you do interviews with people that have been making money from music. Yeah. I, you know, my interviews is I give them a sheet of questions and they answer them and that's my interview. I don't consider myself a, a good interview <laughs> your type person. Well, it doesn't even have, I mean, just to get the information of like, yeah, get the, yeah, get the information and, um, you know, just get other people's take on how they do things. But, you know, there, most people, when they first come on the MLR are overwhelmed and they just go, Oh, this is horrible. I can't find anything. But if you just take the time and look through it and work through it and as, a number of people have said it's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. So it takes time. This is, you know, I, I don't your audience consists of, I'm not sure. Is it mainly songwriters? It's a, it's the whole gamut. But um, the reason I'm even interviewing right now, you right now is because I'm working with my friend, Michelle Lockie, that I know, you know, um, mm -hmm. that is a composer and she is making, you know, consistent money from this. And she always talks about the five year plan. Right. Exactly. You know? yeah. Well, my five year plan. Take a while. Mine is 12 year plan now. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, you keep whacking away at it. You know? yeah. And uh, it's, it's a constantly work in progress. You know, I was working on metadata today, and my brother called me, he was a great composer. And, and I just said, you know, the, metadata is a whole nother ball game. We all have to learn. Nobody wants to learn it, nobody mm. wants to be administrator. But you learn it and it's constantly changing. I look at metadata on cues that I've done, you know, 10 years ago, and I go, what was I thinking? <laughs> so wrong. This is so wrong for, and you know, it's just constantly learning. I'm constantly changing titles, you know, to be, you know, to be more reflective of what the music, you know, mm. feels like. Um, but just this things, it's, it's a long, it's, it's a marathon. It definitely is. It is. But if you have the passion to write music, then, yeah. you know, you're going to write it anyway. So why not try to get it into some production, you know, opportunities and make money, right? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the other thing is I'm late to the game to Spotify and all that stuff. But, you know, it's, it's getting as many passive income flows as you can get going. Absolutely. And, and you know, I tell people it's just, you get it. I look at Spotify, you know, it's pennies, you know, but the thing is, who knows where this is going? And um, I'm just putting my fingers out there in as many, you know, pies as possible because you just don't know. And for me personally, I want to own all of our music. I'm not going to give it up. All my stuff is not exclusive, but that's just a, a choice that somebody has to make. And I think that's a choice that people make depending on where they are in their life. Yep. Absolutely. Well, I know that you have generously given us, uh, my audience, a discount. So can you tell people how much it is to join the uh, monthly subscription? Uh, well, it starts with weekly. I think the weekly is $14.95. Okay. 
okay. um, where the coupon is 25% off. And what a lot of people do is, they'll, because there's so much information, especially when you're going through libraries and go, well, let me read the comments on this one. Let me look at this one. Let me try that. A lot of people come on and they just, they get a, a week or maybe they'll get a month. And I, I forgot what the month is. I have to look it up. It's on the website. Um, the coupon will give you 25% off. Uh, they'll come on, they'll get a week, they'll digest a lot of information, and then, you know, they'll come back a month or two later, or maybe six months later, they'll get another week. Um, that makes sense. That's that's a great model. Do you do you have a lot of new libraries coming on, or is it mostly the same information? Uh, no, there's, there's always new ones coming up. I get, you know, I got an... I got an email the other day from somebody who said, well, I'm starting a library and uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to reach out to your composers and start this library. I said, well, what's your website? Um, do you have any track record in this business? Well, I am a composer, but I don't have the website. Well, uh, you know, okay, try it <laughs> maybe. But I mean, most of the time a composer will say, well, here's a new company. Then I'll get them and I'll list them. <clears throat> and I have a page uh, a new listing page up there. It shows all the latest listings. Of the, uh, oh, perfect. Yeah. That sounds great. Well, you guys, I want to make sure you guys get your 25% discount. So I'm creating a link for you. It's at femmusician.com slash library. That's F as in female, E as an entrepreneur, musician.com slash library. You can go over there um, and then remember to put in the uh, code. Do you remember what our code is? I'm trying to remember what it is now. It was FMI 25. Ah, uh, F-E-M-25. Thank you. F-E-M-25. So go to the link, femmusician.com slash library, and then put in F-E-M-25 to get your 25% off. And thank you so much, Art. I really appreciate this. And I will definitely let you know, you know, what the feedback is that um, my audience has on what you got going on over there. And I can't wait for a lot of them to try it. Yeah, thank you. Just And then you can always contact me there on the site. Just, you know, hit the contact link and ask away. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bree. Take care. Nice to meet you.